All right, continuing Acts chapter 2. So we very much just went through Peter, the first part of Peter addressing the crowd. Okay. And now he says, let's just keep reading it. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you know, as you yourselves know. Okay, I want to stop and just point out something that evangelicals will get really offended by, but I want you to think about this, Delaney. Peter, who has walked with him, seen miracles, seen him raise, seen him rise, all of it. Peter describes Jesus as what? A man. A man. Yeah. Who God sent. Yeah. yeah, and it's clear as day. He could have said, and he re- he calls him Jesus of Nazareth. Mm-hmm. He shows that the manhood of him was what we need to focus on, mm-hmm. because if it's the God part of him, then all you're doing is giving glory to God, because it's yeah. one God. Yeah, you get that. The whole this whole mm-hmm. thing, I it was like the one thing I noted was yeah. that Peter literally talks to the crowd like remember that guy yeah he's a guy and god did all this yes stuff through him. yes yeah that destroys trinitarianism that's yeah cr- yeah because why though they think that jesus himself was god which we which we agree with yeah what but the problem is is in persons okay okay that's trinitarian when you think trinity think persons yeah okay and because men created this, they say God is not the father who sent his son. Mm-hmm. God is three persons. Mm-hmm. And when they do that, they make Jesus God the son. Mm-hmm. That is something Peter and Paul will not do in all of their writings. They don't recognize the Trinity. Yeah. They recognize as God filling the man who allowed him to overcome him and then became God in flesh that mm-hmm. saves us. Mm-hmm. But they try to make it persons. Now the wind that just fell, that's a person too to a Trinitarian. That's a separate person, different than Jesus, different than God the Father. Mm-hmm. And then those three men, and that is where they, t- the scripture, I think Peter would have clearly said, and God the Son came down from above, yeah. never. Yeah. Never. Yeah. He says, Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God. (laughs) Come on. Come on. To you by miracles. Accredited by God to you by miracles, which God did among you through him. Right. As you yourselves know. Always honor to God through Jesus. That's how you do it. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, (laughs) freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him, the man. And God freed him from the dead. The only thing that's confusing with Trinitarian talk is really the way that Jesus refers to himself. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because he just gets like real, but everything he says is is like really lofty yeah sort of you know and he or says like, i don't say anything of myself yeah if i did i'd be talking about what we did with kickball in galilee as a kid yeah he only says what his father the, god tells him to say he, okay yeah like which doesn't mean that's all he is no it means it's like you talking about what God is all the time yeah. and just yeah. not yourself. Yeah, it doesn't You're mean that's me. I'm a man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. And so he, just to remember from the last episode, he just got finished telling people what the spirit is doing mm-hmm. and how to, how this is going to transpire over the next last days. Mm-hmm. And how they can be saved from it. And it's by calling on the name of the Lord. And this is the Lord. The Lord is this man Mm -hmm. who God worked through that we put to death or Mm -hmm. you put to death. Um, And he says, David said about him and like quotes David. Mm -hmm. And who's, sorry, but who's David? So that's going back to the Old Testament. And um, the nation of Israel wanted a king. So they elected Saul. Saul. He's the first king of, of Israel. Mm. And then, but God wanted David. 
Mm-hmm. And so David is a historical Old Testament figure that was the king of Israel. He was their material, physical king. Okay. And they loved David, okay, because he killed Goliath and he had all these other great things. And he was a great king who loved God. But so what Peter is doing there is saying, you've received uh, David as your king and you constantly are talking about King David. Well, this is the real king. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. this is what David said about that. That's the real right. King. And when the old king that you hold up is so great, cites a prophecy about the king to come, you have focused on the wrong king. You got yeah. a real one here that you killed, is what Peter's saying to him. Okay, and David, what David said was that he, the point that Peter's trying to make is that David said he escaped death but David died. Yeah. Like that's what he's trying to say. David said, I saw the Lord. He, uh, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, you will, you will not let your Holy one see decay. And he's like, fellow Israelites, I'll tell you confidently that P- David died and was buried and his yeah. tomb is here to this day. Yeah. So that's not what he was saying. He right. was referring to the Lord. That's defeating right. Death. Right. Who would, whose body would not decay. Hmm. So what he's saying is you thought David was talking about himself. He was prophesying of this one Mm -hmm. because he's saying David's still over there rotting. There's his grave. Yeah. This one rose. How did people, how did people like reconcile that? If they thought David was talking about himself, do you know, like in that time, they probably had all kinds of mystical thoughts about him being a spirit that went to heaven and, or he's not there. And Peter's just clarifying it. He, He was a picture and type of the King to come. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Um, That's not easy stuff to read through right there. It's it's kind of difficult if you don't know the history. I, well, you're helping me a lot. Yeah. Um, okay, but he was a prophet, knew God had promised him the oath that he would place one of his descendants on the throne. That's Jesus. Okay. Yeah. David was promised. Let me tell you something. I'm God, and, and you will always have a king on the throne okay. that you're sitting on. Okay. Yeah, it's a prophecy. And Jesus is from the line of David? Yes. Okay, wow. Um, Which is what the genealogies are at the beginning of Matthew and Luke. mm, To prove him and his kingly line to both Abraham and David. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, Seeing... Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body decay. God had raised Jesus to life. We're all witnesses of it. Yep. Exalted to the right of the hand of God. He has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, sit in my right hand until I make your enemies footstool for your feet. Showing a prophecy was all about Jesus. Okay. Now I just got to rock your world for a minute, but it's going to okay. help you in your overall understanding. What changed my view as your dad reading the scripture was I was teaching through the book of Hebrews and I read the the phrase that said and jesus or whoever god yeshua will be at the right hand of the father until and when it said until i said wait a second Mm. i thought jesus you know he was always at the right hand of the father Mm. and that's what he's saying he says he's ascended to the right hand of the father Mm -hmm. but the scripture talks about a time when he won't be there anymore he'll leave that and when that was said, I knew we, there's different ages we're talking about here. Mm. So when Christian pastors are saying, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, he's making intercession for you, and God is angry at your sin, and he'll say, no, I'm covered. It's all fairy tale, mm-hmm. fairy tale, because he left the right hand of the Father, and he turned all of everything back to the Father's hand, is what mm. Scripture says. Mm. So that God is all in all, is what the Scripture says. That's a quote. So that God is all in all. Okay. He turned it back to God. Turned it back to his father, all of it. Yeah. That's what Jesus the man did mm-hmm. as having overcome everything in our flesh. So when you see that, you can also see how the Trinity is not working because the Trinity keeps them all in the same place. But this is not the same. He's not there forever. He's only there until this stuff that we're reading about is done and mm. fixed. Does that make sense or is it too much so far? No, it makes sense. Okay. Um, 
So Peter's speaking of he went up and he's at the right hand of the father. That was true then. Mm -hmm. That was true. Yeah, it's like David and Peter didn't know the until part. When does Jesus say until? Uh, the book of Hebrews says it. And then also it, it says, Paul says it in 1 Corinthians mm -hmm. that he will be at the right hand until wow. God has put everything under his feet. Hmm. And when God has put everything under his feet, he too will be put under, will put himself under God so that God will be all in all is what it says in first Corinthians 15. Hmm. So we have a, uh, we have Jesus next to the father. And then we have it only until God puts everything under his feet, mm. which is the law, the prophets, all he came to do from the Old Testament. And then Jesus goes away. The question is, where does he go? I suggest he sits on the throne and is God. I suggest that the fullness of God is in that incarnate deified body of Christ. But there's nothing to suggest that. You just... Why, why I, do you say that? Because the book of Revelation, John sees into the heavens after everything's done. And there's a called the throne room. And there's only one on it. God. This one has a hand that can take things. What? Yeah. And so when you do that, I, I say suddenly God has become anthropomorphic through the deified body of his son. To see him is to see his father. He has taken it. So now you start to see why Jesus is important. Yeah. You know, he is, he is a footnote. And, but because we see God as being the separate. Mm. And he was when Jesus was incarnate. Mm. But now God has deified this man. Mm -hmm. And now this, I think, now that's me. I think he's the one on the throne. If he's not, and he took his corporal body so Grady doesn't believe in the corporal body he thinks he took his body and just dissolved it and he's Jesus's spirit with the father and it's just mm. one but because he has hands and John saw it it's figurative I wonder about that that you think there's a body up I there. wonder yeah but there aren't other bodies are there, there are but none of them are sitting on the throne that's the point other bodies are up there yeah, there's bodies of animals, there's bodies of angels, there's bodies of the saints who have been mur martyred in John's vision, but there's one on the throne. I understand. Yeah. I just didn't know there were other bodies yeah. up there. Yeah. I don't like that. There's well, bodies? Well, it's heaven? spiritual. Remember, he's using, he's using imagery to describe something he's seen in the spirit. So because he says bodies and thrones doesn't mean that's what they are. He's using imagery for us to understand what he saw. Okay, so it could, so there being a hand. Could be completely figurative. Oh, okay, I see. All right. Yeah. And I, I admit that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know you do. I'm just trying to understand. Okay. And do you think that Jesus on the throne has like absorbed God or he's replaced him and God's elsewhere? No replacing it's there's no god elsewhere it's just god okay yeah. okay yeah um whether it's the body or not it's just god because this goes back to the makeup of god and i mm -hmm. think god is perfect male and perfect female mm -hmm. they reunited in the one god uh in with christ having overcome everything what that looks like i don't know yeah yeah i i hear that and I'm not making Jesus a footnote. No, I, I know. Just, it's like what comes first for me to understand what Jesus does. Is, God. Yeah. You're dead on with it. But, but that's in the past. Like right now, if we're just to understand the... It is weird that there's like a timeline to God to God. There's like a before and an after of yeah. God's like form. Yeah. Which kind of is weird to me. Well, you know, and then we have answers for that that we make up. God is outside the time space continuum. Yeah. You know, he we are seeing just one part of the parade. He sees the whole thing beginning to end. I think most of that's made up. I think God has time and I think he operates within time frames. And we say all that stuff because it makes it convenient to answer questions we don't know. Yeah. But I think there's time frames and he operates by them relative to us and other things. Yeah, I mean, clearly he works Come along. on. Like this whole story is about time. Yes. But 
how he works. It's hard to presume how he works. Very hard. But like, it's not that he works off time, but it's not that he doesn't work off time either. Uses what he wants. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Hmm. Um, where do we end off? Okay. So exalted to the right hand of God. For David did not ascend to heaven, yet he said, The Lord sits at my sit at my right hand. Yeah. Okay. So therefore let so after all that, yeah. Peter's telling the people, Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Yeah. And again, another emphasis that God <laughs> made him, right? And crazy. The, the, the the crazy other thing about that is that um wait a minute I got it that God made this Jesus uh, that the name Jesus means the anointed one mm. that's what it means so he was anointed by what by God mm. that is what the anointed one yeah. was so let's get rid of all the mystical baby Jesus having the power to do it come on yeah. you know he was a man yeah. yeah was it you talking to someone was talking about how Jesus like maybe it was greedy that he didn't sin mm -hmm. and it's like sin was like a really specific term for mm. something where it's like he he did certain things he probably like wasn't this perfect guy even he learned obedience but, yeah. yeah he was perfect in terms of uh, it seems to me like complete in his devotion allegiance to god yeah yeah but yeah, that, but maybe that's did he what I stub mean. his toe? Yeah, because he wasn't listening to mom. Yeah, hey man, that's a. But yeah. that's what we want to do. We want to yeah. deify him before he learned the lessons, mm -hmm. right? But he didn't have a heart. That's the thing to sin against his father ever. He made him the one on the throne. Did he make yeah. mistakes? The one on the throne. Yeah, maybe I think maybe it was great you talking about it because he was talking about. Or you, sorry, that uh, idolatry and the yeah. whole thing with the Old Testament was faith and love and not having another. Always. And that was what Jesus was perfect in, yes. not crying or like yeah. emotions or whatever. Yeah. Like, And we want to make him yeah. an idol that uh, even replaces Yahava, his father. And make him a man who was God and all that. Mm. And that's not what the scripture conveys. It conveys a much more naturalistic mm -hmm. approach of God working through this mm -hmm. one. But that one was his son from the get-go. That's uh -huh. the weird part. Yeah, yeah. And he become like, he's on the throne now. Yeah. Too. So like, it's not that he's. Yeah. He's not chopped liver. <laughs> <laughs> but the timing of it. Yeah. It's like not that from his babyhood right. and before right. even that yeah, he was no crying he makes yeah. shut up oh little town of bethlehem yeah that's not the song <laughs> silent night, silent night. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so sacrilegious no it's reality no you that myth is makers another, yeah it's another thing about time how like jesus jesus is um like godliness had a timeline sort of and like he has eras of being he's learning and then he's witnessing or what i don't know and, and he increased in yeah. the wisdom and stature of man yeah it says yeah increased and then he had an era of ministry yeah. and then he had an era of being on the and then he's in heaven and then he's on the throne and then he's yeah yeah at the right hand no, right, hand, right hand and then, and then on he's the on throne. the throne yeah that's and is he on the throne we don't know and i don't care yeah because i care about the one god and i care about what the one god did and, but it does make me appreciate the human side of this man who felt what we feel mm -hmm. and still did what his father wanted him to do mm -hmm. that separates us from him in miraculous ways mm -hmm. yeah it makes sense the there's a lot of things that make sense about like Mormon thinking when I think sure. about this stuff with like acquiring bodies things and the, yeah. And like power, yeah. like growing yeah. after in the afterlife, both here and in the afterlife and like progression. Yeah. 
it's that's where Smith was not wrong in the concept. Yeah. But what he did was he said, God told him this and there's a book <laughs> that also reveals it. And I mean, he, he just he just totally screwed with us. But his thoughts were correct. As, a, as an aside, I was just talking to someone about this, the idea of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And they were like, so like the Mormons say, basically no. with, but that's my question is, they're saying, I was saying either you, the point of either it's fulfilled or church is being done really wrong. And they're like, so that's where Mormons have it right, where they, that's what, they are as they've restored it to yeah. be correct. Yeah. In turn, is that right? <coughs> yeah. <coughs> like supposedly. That, yeah. The yeah. supposedly, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And so that's the argument you make. Well, if he hasn't come back, who's doing church as close to right as possible? Yeah. It's them. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. absolutely them, but they are all doing it through their flesh. Okay. And law. I, I just wasn't sure if that like... No, it's definitely the... an argument. And it's okay. the one that we should be using against evangelicals. Yeah. Because how we crush Mormonism, the Latter-day Saints, is to prove that the Latter Days were then. Yeah. There's yeah. no... Christians have n are ridiculous. Ridiculous. Christians offer nothing to nothing. the world. <laughs> see, and you can, now you're feeling my passion for, yeah. I come out of Mormonism. I see it's a farce. You yeah. make me believe something that's inferior. Yeah. yeah. Like Christianity is just like Mormonism, diet Mormonism. Yeah, diet. Right. It's light. It yeah. doesn't have any of the meat. It doesn't have any of yeah. the apostles. At least they can pretend. Yeah. At least you know. they're like, yeah, they have some freaking yeah reason to what they're doing yes in a certain way except it's all grounded in this looking into a hat it's stuff. all the, the myth mythos yeah. but here's the other thing which is really revelatory this is so good is that smith he and and this is proven by uh history is he embarked not just to fix religion christianity mm -hmm. and make it the restored church he also did simultaneously hand in hand did it to fix masonry mm. and masonry is the operative approach to making bad citizens better and good citizens best mm. it's all based on taking the man or the woman and elevating them to higher and higher performances mm. and that's what that's what that's all about so he merged those two and that's why Mormonism is so effective. Mm -hmm. But Masonry is a humanist approach. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even care about God. It cares about what men do and their fame and their money. So that's why it's diabolical. It's a mm -hmm. counterfeit of ins insane genius. Mm -hmm. But it's diabolical and the end of it is death mm -hmm. because they're not alive. Mm -hmm. They're serving the dead law and they think that they're perfecting their flesh. So I'm going to this length with you because we've never had these conversations of the Mormon Christian thing. Mm -hmm. I'm helping you understand why it's, does it do good on earth? Sure, mm -hmm. but it is such a diabolical farce. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that stuff is what I spent all those years discovering. And man, you wanna go back into that, it is deeply rooted into esoterica, the occult, spiritualism, Egypt, all of those dark forces is, is the power behind that thing. That's why you got Gollum as their damn prophet. Sorry. <laughs> Guys, Gollum names his book Heart of the Matter. Sorry. Didn't he just die? No. He just died? Ballard died, who was uh, the biggest criminal on earth. Sorry. Oh, my gosh. In my opinion. <laughs> I just heard it on the radio. Yeah, Ballard. Someone died. Yeah, Heart of the Matter. Check it out if you yeah. haven't freaking heard of it. <laughs> Um, okay. How long we go? We're at 25 I'm, minutes. I'm ranting. No, this is so good. Good. Thank you. Um, let's but do one more why, episode. Yeah. yeah. This is why Acts 2 is so good because there are nuggets in here that destroy religion. Yeah. I did not pick up on most of it. I have one question for the next episode that was the only thing I really picked up on. So this is so useful. Are we still recording? Yep. Okay. <laughs> here we go. Ending now.